Good morning and a very warm welcome to St Michael's Church in Hinton for this service for Hinton, Bransgore and Thorny Hill. You're very, very welcome to be with us today. Psalm 46 in the Bible tells us that the Lord is our strength and refuge, a very present help in times of trouble. Let's sing that great truth to ourselves with our first hymn, God is our strength and refuge. Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it, namely this, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There are no other commandments greater than these. Upon these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Perhaps you'd join me in a moment of quiet to call to mind the ways in which we've not loved the Lord our God, the giver of life with all of our heart, soul, mind or strength, all our neighbours as ourselves. And then if you wish to do so, you can ask for God's forgiveness with the words that will appear shortly. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect Prayer for the fifth Sunday after Easter. O Lord, from whom all good things do come, grant to us, thy humble servants, that by thy holy inspiration we may think those things that be good, and by thy merciful guiding may perform the same through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Well, in just a moment, we're going to sing again. And after that, there's going to be a reading from the Bible read to us uh, by Steve. That's going to be the last part of our series on 1 Corinthians 15, uh, looking at life after death. Uh, What's that like and how can we be sure of it? And after that, there'll be a a talk and another uh, chance to sing and then some prayers led for us today uh, by Maria. Uh, Our song we're going to sing now is a wonderful reminder of uh, how unique the Lord Jesus Christ uh, is. It's called the King of Peace, the King of Kings and Lords of Lords. And it's got some actions that you might like to try. Uh, it goes like, uh, like this. I should warn you, some of these are not for the, for the faint-hearted. Uh, he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He can heal the sick. Now, this is quite disgusting, but we came up with this action at school. What do you do when you're sick? Well, you're, you vomit, don't you? Well, if you're healing the sick, well, maybe it's the vomit going back in. That's horrid, isn't it? I didn't come up with this. He can heal the sick. He's the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He can heal the sick and calm the storm. He's the Son of God and he can save us from sin and he calls us to follow him. So walk. You can do that, can't you? No one will see if you give it a go. Let's sing. <laughs> reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 50 to 58. I tell you this brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this imperishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on the immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labour is not in vain. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. An 
undercover quest to steal the secret recipe for Hampshire steamed livers, the nation's favorite fast food, the catch. The secret recipe is stored on a kitchen computer on a converted oil rig in the South Atlantic, guarded by mad scientist apes. Only one team are up to the job. Meet Professor Steve from Brandscore University. He is the boffin to hack into the kitchen computer system. Chef Ben is the industry expert interpreting the crude data. Sailor Sergeant is the one who will get our experts into position. Over and out. So here we are in the kitchen of Hampshire Steamed Livers. Thank you so much, uh, Sailor Sergeant, for getting us in. Uh, for getting us in here. I'm just hacking in uh, to the mainframe uh, right now. Chef Ben, can you write all this down? Sure. Thank you. Here we go. The secret ingredients of Hampshire Steamed Livers. Let's unlock the slimy yet spongy secrets. First ingredient: salt, more salt. Extra salt, sea salt, bath salt, sodium, corn salt, cauliflower essence, Brussels sprouts essential oil. Quick, it sounds like they're coming to get us. The last ingredient, they're nearly here. Mechanically recovered bat liver. They're in the next room. What are we going to do? Chef Ben, what are you going to do with that lift if they catch you with that list? That'll be the end. What are you going to do? I've just the idea. So last week in our service, we thought about the future of our bodies, how they'd be transformed from glory into even greater glory. And that this truth is, is guaranteed to us by the resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, from the dead. So that when we think about life after death, it's not uh, a case of fantasizing or wishful thinking, but it's something based upon historical evidence about the resurrection. We learnt too that the resurrected body of Jesus Christ is the model of what life after death looks like. So if we think that life after death is about sitting on a cloud for eternity or being a ghost or a zombie or something like that, we've got no evidence for those thoughts. That's the future of our bodies and it is glorious. The future of death is what we're thinking about today and that is not glorious. The future of death looks very bad for death. Uh, Paul wants to tell us now that death has been swallowed up in victory and that death has lost its sting. Let's look at that now. Firstly then, death has been swallowed up in victory. This is the claim that Paul makes, that there will be a day when death will be no more, everything that is terrible about death will be gone. This is what he says in verse 51 onwards. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the imperishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. In other words, Paul tells us that God has set a day of justice and of victory, a day of the blast of a trumpet when we will be changed and death will be no more. The Perishable will be changed to the imperishable. That's the hope for our bodies, but no hope for death on that day. It will be swallowed up in victory. That means it'll be uh, taken away. It won't exist anymore. Uh, rather like uh, Chef Ben intervening to swallow that recipe, that secret recipe, so that it's gone forever with no trace of its existence. God has set a day when death will be swallowed up 
for good. A day of victory. I wonder what you make of, of that. It doesn't sound too good to be true. Well, it is really good. But the reason why it's not too good to be true, the reason why death coming to an end is not a fantasy, is the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You see, the resurrection of, of Jesus is the first nail in the coffin, if you like, for death. It's a sign that death has been defeated. It couldn't kill the Son of God. It couldn't hold him. Its power was weak in comparison to Jesus' goodness and purity and holiness. And as he burst from the tomb on that first Easter day, a sign was put up saying death is no longer as powerful as it was. Death will be swallowed up in victory. And because of that, death has lost its sting. Now, death is awful. Death is so uh, painful, it really does have a great sting to it. Nothing quite as awful as losing someone we love. It's ever so hard to say uh, goodbye, even if we're sure that there is life after death and will be reunited again. Death is painful. There's nothing nice about death. It has a real sting to it. And of course, that is even worse if we have no hope. If when we say goodbye to a loved one, we're sure somewhere deep down that we will never see them again, that that really is the end for them. And that's why we try to wrap up the sting of death in so many of our funeral uh, traditions, like speaking about death in really odd ways, like using the expression uh, passing away, as though something not really that bad has happened, but death is bad. Some of the poems we use at funerals which seem to deny that anything has really happened at, at all. He's only gone away uh, into the next room. I am not dead. I, I did not die. One poem that we have read at funerals says, well, that's a, a fantasy designed to cover up, designed to wrap up the real sting that death has. Death is terrible. And yet it's even worse than we imagine. Paul tells us this. This is why death really does have a sting. Verses 55 to 57. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? That's the good news. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. To understand the good news that death has lost its sting, we need to understand that death has a sting because death is not just about saying goodbye to a loved one. It's about separation from God. God designed us to be eternal, to have an eternal friendship with him. Sin is where we turn away from that vision of what it means to be a human being. And death is a symptom that the world is not right because we are not right with God. Death is a sign of our separation from the one who gives us life. Death is a sign of the sin that says, shove off God, I'm in charge, no to your rules. The broken friendship that exists between us and God, which deserves God's just condemnation, a life without him forever. And so the power of sin is, is the law, like the Ten Commandments, which remind us that we're not perfect. Even if we look at other people and decide we're better than them, we're hardly free from accusation. Which of us hasn't uh, stolen from others by our dishonesty or committed adultery by looking at, at somebody in the wrong way, fantasising about them? It's ever so easy to break God's laws Laws which demand our justice and purity and perfection. The law condemns us and sin is a sign of our separation from God. But, says Paul, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, death 
has lost its sting. There's been a little bit of worry recently uh, in the in the tabloids about so-called uh, murder hornets that are invading the country. Oh goodness, yeah, right. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this, um, ho hopefully it's going to go uh, in a moment. Um, a great deal of 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 worry about hornets. They're massive, aren't they? And um, and of course they have a very nasty sting. And supposedly the the murder hornets. A lovely name uh, for an insect, doesn't it? It's supposed to be fatal. Well, I don't think it it really is. It's probably nothing really to worry about. Of course, if hornets, not a stingy insect, didn't have uh, a sting, we'd probably see them in a very, very different way uh, completely. If the hornets didn't have a sting, we might view it, well, maybe with indifference, perhaps like we um, view a stag beetle. If a neighbour's scared and they see uh, a stag beetle, or we might even see it as something altogether different, something maybe that's even... Uh, a positive thing, like the way we view uh, butterflies. We're not usually scared of them, but see them in some way as as beautiful. Because Jesus has destroyed the power of death, because death has been swallowed up in victory and it can no longer separate us from God because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For Christians, those who who follow Jesus Christ, there is real hope in the face of death. Death will always be awful, but it's lost its sting because it's lost its power to separate us from God because Jesus died in our place, took that sting of death upon himself and rose again to destroy the power of death, to take away its sting. So when Christians face death, they can face death with real hope. Of course, the real fear behind COVID-19 is a fear of, of death. But according to 1 Corinthians 15, I hope you can see that death has lost its sting and instead we can have hope. So over the last few weeks, we've seen that there is real reason to believe in life after death because of the historical evidence of Jesus' uh, resurrection. We can see that that is a real promise to give us real hope. So what should we do with uh, all of that? What should we do with all of that hope? Well, Paul tells us right at the end of our reading today in verse 58, he says this. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labour in the Lord is not in vain. Paul tells us to press on, to keep on going, to keep on at running the race that is set before us, to stand firm in the face of adversity. And there is plenty of that in the world today. Stand your ground. Keep on doing the good work that God wants you to do because it is not futile and you know that it's not futile because a glorious future is guaranteed to us through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So stand firm, says Paul. Keep on going. Don't lose heart and don't give up.
Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for so many blessings we enjoy, even in a time such as this. Help us to bring these to mind and to notice them daily. We thank you for the technology to stay in contact with people we cannot be with in person and for the people who make that happen. We thank you for the safety of our homes, the beauty of the world outside, the magnificence of where we live. We thank you, Lord, for key workers who are keeping our food shops stocked and pharmacies keeping schools available for those who need them, the postal service still functioning, charities and communities helping each other, and of course the medical profession, all functioning under such difficult circumstances. Thank you for them, Lord. Father God, we pray especially today for people who are lonely, people who are ill or worried, or anxious about themselves or their loved ones. We pray for people in our community who we know, and those unknown to us, who are bereaved, or who are out of work, or concerned for their financial future. We pray for people whose livelihood or home is under threat. We pray, Lord, that you'll grant these people the peace that surpasses all understanding. Give us wisdom and the wherewithal to support each other emotionally and practically, we pray. We pray for wisdom and protection for people in leadership of our country and abroad as they grapple with the effects of the coronavirus on our collective health, societies and economies. We are mindful, Lord, of elections looming in America, the ongoing state of emergency in Niger and the UN peacekeepers who were wounded or killed this week. We are mindful of the ongoing climate crisis which has been sidelined but is still there. We pray for your wisdom in these situations and that you will raise up men and women who will uphold values of justice and speak out against injustice and inspire people with hope where there is despair. There is so much to pray for, Lord, in our own homes, in our immediate community and further afield. Help us to keep grateful for our blessings. Give us hope and courage to make a difference when we can, and peace to trust you in situations where we cannot or do not have influence. In closing, Let us pray the prayer that the Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So thank you very much to Maria for leading us in that time of prayer. There's just a few little church family uh, news items, notices, uh, before we finish our time together uh, today. Do look on our church website to find out all the details of the usual uh, COVID-19 things we've got going on uh, at the moment. So the uh, morning, weekday prayer meeting uh, with uh, Bible time at the Vicarage. That's Monday through to Friday, 8.30, lasts for about 20 minutes. Our Zoom prayer meeting on Sunday evenings at 7.30 and uh, and our Zoom uh, party, uh, Saturday night fever. So come and uh, join us for that. Uh, It's great to keep in touch with each other. Do keep phoning around and making sure that each other are all right. It's ever so important, isn't it? As a church, we're committed to making sure that uh, others in our local community are doing okay and aren't going without uh, without food. Thank you very much to everyone who's generously donated towards the Basics Bank. Uh, Do keep up uh, that work. Uh, It's much appreciated. Uh, Greetings to you, particularly today, if you're someone who's sort of made contact with us during uh, this time of of lockdown. 
I'd love to open up an opportunity for, for everyone to find out more about uh, Jesus Christ and ask those questions you've always wanted to, uh, to ask. And a great way to do that uh, is through Christianity Explored. So we're going to be running a Christianity Explored course uh, starting on the 2nd of June. It'll run for uh, seven Tuesday evenings. It'll be done through Zoom again, and we can tell you all about how that works uh, if you're interested in coming to the course. And again, details are on our uh, website and there's a link in the description below, as well as a, a, a link to the Christianity Explored website telling you what that's all about. And it's a wonderful opportunity uh, to explore the evidence about Jesus for yourself and come up with your own, uh, own conclusions. So I commend that to you. It's been wonderful to see how much people have grown in, in prayer during the lockdown. And uh, you might know that normally we have a, a nine days of, of prayer from Ascension Day uh, to Pentecost, Thy Kingdom Come. Uh, that will still be happening this year. And uh, details, again, will be published on the website of all the different prayer events and opportunities that will be available to you. So I really commend that uh, to you. Let's sing our final hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Thank you very much for joining with us uh, today. If you've enjoyed the service, please do like it on YouTube. That's very easy to do. And uh, subscribe to our channel so that you never miss uh, a service from, from here. Uh, please, if you're on Facebook or other social media, uh, share the service so that many more people can find out about uh, the claims of Jesus Christ and the hope that we so desperately uh, need, particularly perhaps at this time. We pray for God's blessing now as we finish. May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.